All right. Hey, everybody. It's me, Rebecca Benito. Welcome to Pleasure Evolution and today's episode of the Rebecca Benito Show, When Pain is Your Pleasure, Understanding and Embracing Your Desires for Sadism and Masochism. So for those of you who don't know me, I am the founder of Pleasure Evolution, where we are helping you become empowered by cultivating and embracing your sexual authenticity. So everything that I do, and I do a lot because I've got a lot of modalities under my belt, but everything that I do is about helping you create a better relationship to your own body, your sexual desires, and the people that you share those things with. And these videos that I do every other week, sometimes every week if I've really got a lot on my mind, are about what happens up here and sometimes it's about what happens in here and sometimes it's about what happens down there but we're always talking about tools tips and techniques for helping you really connect to who you would be if nobody told you how you were supposed to run your love life right um, sex is one of those things that I've discovered people have a lot of shame and conditioning around. Sex is one of those things where a lot of people think they're either having too much, too little, or the wrong kind. And so many people call me up and say, is it weird that I like X? Is it weird that I'm turned on by Y? Is there something wrong with me that I don't think I can be married to one person and stay monogamous for my whole life? And the answer is no. As long as you are in integrity and playing with other people who are on the same page as you and want the same things as you. So today we're talking about pain and pleasure. And I got my little, I got a little Domly look going today. You know, can you see my spikes? There you go. Just put your head on my shoulder. <laughs> So, in case you haven't noticed, I, uh, I'm kind of dominant by nature. That's where my appetites run. And that wasn't something that I was immediately at home with. It's not something I knew about myself as a young person. It's something that I came to more in my 30s and 40s and really began, began um, in my late 40s sort of actualizing in my sex life. So let's talk a little bit about terms for folks that are not familiar with what's sadism and what's masochism. So sadism comes from the Marquis de Sade. He was a famous writer um, in France and he wrote novels in which he uh, tortured, um, created physical pain in, shall we say, willing subjects. So sadism, is when you, it's commonly thought of as someone who likes to create pain. And I want to talk a little bit about my mentor in this realm, who was Midori. She's an amazing, you can look her up, Midori, uh, dominatrix, sex educator, shibari rope artist, and performance artist. So she says that sadism is when you get your zhwing, your turn on, your wetness, your hardness from um, creating sensation in another person. And the sensation could be pain, but it also could be pleasure. Um, masochism is when you get your zwing from receiving, right? The dupe de mas masoch, masochia. Um, so what's going on when someone likes receiving pain? Um, when someone, pain is just a definition that we make for intensity of sensation. And actually pain isn't always pain, you know, the way we think of pain. For example, I had a baby without anesthesia. My first child was born in a hospital. Um, labor was very slow progressing and I had to have drugs in order to stimulate labor, which made the labor really hard, really painful, and then I had on top of that, I had to have an epidural to numb me out to the pain. My second child was born at home with a midwife 
and I was really in agreement with my contractions. I just allowed my body, instead of fighting against the intensity that my body was going through, I lined myself up with it, and I knew that at the end there was going to be this beautiful baby. And having the baby that way was was orgasmic, I have to say. It wasn't painful. It was pleasurable to feel my body contracting around this child, moving this child through. So when someone has a desire to receive pain as part of their sexual turn-on, usually it's because they have the ability, their receptors take in the intensity of what may feel like pain to other people and converts it so that it goes and transmits to the part of the brain that lights up when we feel pleasure. So they experiencing pain as uh, they get a dopamine dump, actually. They experience it as exhilaration. They experience it actually as pleasure. Now, sometimes the feeling of having the pain is also, there's also a, a mental aspect to it. Um, I know a lot of people who enjoy receiving pain, who enjoy the feeling of endurance, somewhat like a marathon runner who runs and runs and takes their body beyond what you think humans should endure. Well, someone who enjoys being the subject of somebody else's um, dealing out physical sensation enjoys the endurance. There's an endorphin rush that happens when you push your body beyond its, its usual capacities. So is somebody screwed up just because they enjoy pain. No, they're not. They're not they, they don't necessarily have low self-esteem and think that they deserve to be punished. There might be that aspect of it, but that's not everybody's experience of it. Now, if you're a person who craves pain, I'm here to tell you that that may have nothing to do with how um, assertive, how dominant or submissive you are in every other aspect of your life. And in fact, it's been my experience that a lot of my clients who want to be able to accept their submissiveness are extremely dominant in, and powerful in their everyday life. It's very common for them to be firemen and CEOs and people that live where they are very much in control and having to be in charge and having to keep all the balls in the air and having to take care of everything. And so in the aspect of being submissive, particularly, and a pain receptor, a masochist, secondarily, they get the opportunity to not be in charge. They get the opportunity to be at what I call at effect of somebody else, of what somebody else is doing. Now, in my experience, also people that, and I have to, I'm going to be honest, even though I'm dominant in terms of I like to control the situation, um, but I also sometimes like being spanked. Um, there's something that I enjoy about a good firm hand. I find it very grounding, right? So there's something that pain does for you. It brings you present moment. So if you think that you might enjoy receiving pain, it could be because you're using it as a way to calm your parasympathetic nervous system. It brings you very present moment. Um, your attention becomes focused on transmuting the sensation you have just felt. Um, your mind cannot be wandering. It's brought sharp like this into presence. So it's for you to decide why you are turned on by pain. And it's for you to just figure out what kind of pain. There are different kinds of pain, too. You know, there are sharp, thuddy pains. Like when you get spanked, smacked. Um, there are stingy pains, like when someone flicks you in the locker room with a towel. And there are certain implements, tools that you can buy on various sex toy sites that will deliver different kinds of sensations. So learning about what kinds of sensations feel good to your part, your body can be a wonderful exploration. And if you're with a partner and you're just learning this for the first time together, um, approaching this as an exploration, let's try some different things and see what we like. And once we find a toy sensation that we like, how hard do I like it? How hard do you like to dish it out? If you have a partner that doesn't think that they like to 
deliver sensation, one of the things that can be really fun to do is to alternate delivering painful sensations with delivering sensual sensations, right? So part of what happens is that both of you begin to link sexual feelings turn on to the pain. And with enough of that happening, it becomes a training so that the smack becomes associated with the pleasure to follow. And the body doesn't wait, it begins to go into pleasure mode. I mean, I know some masochists who can absolutely orgasm from being hit. Uh, I know one woman who had her clitoris pierced, something that a lot of people would think, uh, no, that's a red, not for me. Um, she loved it, right? It was immediate, an immediate sensation, an immediate orgasmic sensation for her. <sighs> Woo, getting hot in here or is it just me? So uh, you might have noticed I said that's a red for me. And for people who are new to this concept, I want to talk about that for a minute. If you're going to indulge in sadism and masochism play, you want to learn about the traffic lights and safe words. Okay, so traffic light first. Traffic light has a very clear sense of communication. Green means keep going, yellow means slow down, and red means stop. So when you are in this experiment, and when you are in a scene, either an experimental scene or you've already negotiated and you know what you like and you're playing with someone as an experienced player, you use the traffic light colors to communicate with your partner. That way, you don't have you you get the opportunity to fight and resist and have the fun of saying no stop don't do that ouch it hurts without the scene stopping because as a sadist as someone who really likes seeing reaction and I like seeing all kinds of reaction I like seeing pleasurable reaction I can get very turned on from my partner's orgasm but I can and I can also get very turned on from seeing a, a partner squirm and struggle and sweat and suffer a little for my on my behalf. What can I tell you? It turns me on. It, uh, it, I didn't know this about myself. When I first was exposed to this world, and I knew some people who had gone to a play club, and they described a scene, I freaked out. I've told this story a half a dozen times. I freaked out, started crying, and made my husband take me home. Um, because it was outside of my box. It was outside of my parameters. And my way in was to start doing some reading, to reading, read some erotica and, and allow myself without judgment to be turned on by what I was turned on by, knowing that just because I was turned on by it didn't mean I had to run out and do it. And I would like to invite you to give yourself that same permission, right? So everything you've thought about who you need to be as a sexual being and everything, everywhere that you have judgments about what a right sexual person being is and a wrong sexual being is, would you be willing to let that go now? Yes. Energetically, let's just let that go. Judgment is nothing more than something somebody told you once that was true for them or true for their parents, or true for their community, that may or may not be true for you. So a lot of sexual authenticity is about discovering what is true for you, and what works for you, and what works for your partner. So okay, so you're playing, and I might say to someone that I don't know real well, what's, I, I smack them with something, what's your color? And if they tell me green mistress, I like being called mistress. Um, if they say green, I know they like it. And if they say yellow, it might be that I'm approaching something. And I can even say, oh, did you, do you need it slower? Is it, are you yellow because it's too fast, too, too hard? And if they're red, that means we're done with that toy. And then I'll switch to something else or some other sensation. And part of sadism, too, isn't just about hitting people really hard. You can torture people with temperature, ice, your tongue, your teeth, your fingernails. You can torture people by walking away from them so that they don't know when you're coming back. If they're blind, this only works if they're blindfolded and can't see you. It can be exquisite emotional pain 
emotional torture to someone to walk away from them and just keep just start picking things up from your bag. Oh, do I want to use the seven inch dildo right now? How about this cane? And I'll tap it against the wall. Because conceptual thought is the is one of our senses. When it comes to sensuality, you want to engage all of the senses, right? Having your playmate smell the leather of the whip. Feel it stroking just gently across their face or across their back before the lash comes. So, so let's say that some of what I've been talking about is turning you on right now. I got a thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you, James. Welcome. So you're, I, I invite you right now to just feel into your body, feel into your crotch, feel into your nipples, which is a secondary erectile tissue where arousal often brings blood flow. Just notice what you're aware of. Is any of this turning yourself on? Turning you on? Cool beans. Yay. If it's not, if you're still kind of horrified, hey, that's cool too. Maybe you're on this, this, maybe you're watching this video right now because you're really not into it, but your partner is, and you'd like a better understanding of why. So here's another thing, you know, what judgments have you got about how other people express their sexuality that are keeping you from the fun you could be having, the fun and intimacy you could be having with other people? Because maybe it doesn't exactly, it doesn't turn you on, but it turns your partner on. Would you be willing to let them tell you their fantasies? Would you be willing to read them erotica that arouses them in this arena? And then go into a sexual activity that feels more comfortable for you. Would you be willing to go someplace where following pre-negotiated terms, they could play with someone else? Because I, I have to tell you, if you ask your lover to put any piece of themselves into a box in order to stay with you, you're both kidding yourself about how much you actually care about each other. What you care about is your image of who the person, who they are, and you're trying to keep control of who they be. And at some point, they're going to start to resent and miss the piece of them that they had to put in a box for you. And they're going to feel less close to you because they feel less accepted because they have to hide this part. And if you're the person hiding the part, it's exhausting. You know, what's been really interesting for me is that the more self-acceptance and self-love I find, the more creative mojo I've got for everything else in my life. I mean, like my business is just taking off and I'm so in love with you, all my followers and my students. Like I feel this, I just keep wanting to create stuff for you that's going to make your life better. And I just want to keep creating stuff for me that makes my life better. You know what I did yesterday? Yesterday, I went to the spa down in Atlanta with a couple of my friends. <sighs> so I was at the effect of sensation. I was the masochist yesterday. I was the bottom. I let people do things to me. I let the hot tubs, hot water boil me alive. I let the hot saunas, oh, excuse me, on gun sneeze. I let the saunas just leach sweat from my pores. Here it comes. Get ready. Uh, you know, these? What do they say? Think about a sheep. There's something that makes you know. All right, it'll come when it comes. Um, and then I let a little Korean lady um, give me a rub down with these loofah gloves. They call it body shampoo. Um, it's a little bit like being flayed alive. And the very first time I had it done at another spa, I didn't like it because I really did feel like I had been skinned alive. But this time, it was like this exquisite sensation. I, I guess I got in line with the, with the intensity of it, and I didn't treat it like pain. And afterwards, like all of this dead skin comes off, and you're like, you, you're like two pounds lighter, and you feel really clean. Um, yeah, it was, it was exquisite. So according to Maduri's theory, that's masochism, when you are willing to be at the effect of sensation. I mean, let's face it, you can torture someone with pleasurable sensations. 
If you tickle someone long enough, it feels uncomfortable. If you tickle someone when they're tied up, the powerlessness of it, the inability to make it, the illusion that you have the inability to make it stop. Because remember, you can always call red, and you can always use your safe word. What's your safe word? Something you wouldn't normally say in the course of play. Cucumber, avocado, alligator, whatever. Right? So... That means we're, I'm done, the scene needs to stop, for, for any reason. Because you have to go to the bathroom, because you're full, because you maybe got something came up emotionally that you want to talk about, because the sensation is too intense, because you're bored. You can call and to a scene for any reason, both of you, both the, both the dom and the sub, both the sadist, not the sadist, sadist and the masochist. All right, so you got this partner that wants you to beat them, and you don't really know if you've got it in you. That's okay, too. You know, it's, I find that it's particularly hard for long-term couples when this begins to come up, um, and the partner, particularly, there's different things that happen in the, in the couples. And I know this is a little stereotypical, but we're going to talk about it based on your birth body, male bodied, female bodied, because there's a certain level of conditioning that you received. Thank you. <laughs> oh, he says you always turn me on. Well, thank you. See, that's the awesomeness of it. I want to talk about that for a minute. Boy, I'm all over the map. If you've watched my videos, you know I do this. Turn on. It's always available, and you don't always have to do anything with it other than enjoy its presence and allow it to enliven you. Because really, what your turn on is, is your joy, your body's joy at feeling itself and what it's capable of, and allowing the energetic of sexualness to flow into and through you. And we think, you know, this person, James, said, oh, you always turn me on. Well, thank you, but the truth is we like to assign it to somebody outside of ourselves. I created an environment where you could feel yourself, and I think that's the greatest compliment. And the other thing is the greatest gift you can give your, your lover is your turned-on body because we're like little tuning forks. So if one person is resonating and vibrating with turn-on and their crotch is alive, yours is going to come alive too. That's why it's so fun and so fulfilling to be around other people who are willing to be, who are sex positive, who are willing to feel their bodies. And that's why I want to say that if you are willing to experience the joy of your body and the joy of your sexualness, I don't care how big or small, tall or short, or how, how large or small your genitals are, people will feel that energy vibration and want to play with you. So there's another judgment we can throw up out the window. Have you been judging your body as the wrong body for anyone to relate to, creating separation from you and you? Let's destroy and uncreate that all. Good and bad, right and wrong, pod and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Wait, what? What the hell did you just say? Okay, that was a tool of access consciousness called the clearing statement. Access consciousness is a set of tools and techniques to help you know, empower you to know what you know, and it's a school of thought that I've recently added to the modalities that I practice that I'm in love with. So if you want to know more about that, I want to encourage you to go to theclearingstatement.com. It's a website, and they'll explain to you what that gibberish is that I just said. All you really need to know is that when I ask you a question like about something, I bring up a thought form or a way of being that you've been like, Cruci uh, held intact with, held prisoner by, set as a definition and limitation for yourself, and I ask you if you're willing to clear, destroy, and uncreate it, all you have to do is say, sure, yeah, and then let the energetics help you along. Okay, so that's the clearing statement. So we're almost coming to the end. Oh, my God, I've been talking for almost a half an hour because I could talk about this shit all day, y'all. Um because it's fun. How did I get from being scared of people who were into BDSM to curious about it to embracing it in myself? Just that slowly. I allowed myself to be freaked out by it. And instead of saying, well, I'm not into that, which would be a definition and a limitation, I allowed myself to say, maybe I'm into it. I don't know yet. 
maybe I like broccoli, Rob. I don't know yet. I'm going to taste it, right? So I went shopping. Um, I read some soft core kink based um, novels. I highly recommend Anne Rampling, who, which is Anne Rice's pseudonym. pseudonym. She's got a couple of books. Um, Exit to Eden is one. I can't remember the others offhand, but there are books out there. The Sleeping Beauty trilogy is a little more hardcore. Um, the Marketplace series is quite famous, but find something and just start reading. And just read with an eye towards what is this doing in my body? And then you'll learn some things about yourself. So that's curiosity. And once you start exploring your curiosity, and you, then you can get to, well, I might like to try this. So if you're not partnered, let's talk about if you're not partnered, where do you go to try it? You can talk to me, because I am a sex coach, and I work with people over Zoom all over the world. You can come see me if you're in the Asheville area, or if you want to have a long weekend and have a DS Exploration Weekend to learn more about yourself. I do intensives. You can find someone local in your area who is a professional, who might be a kink coach or a sex coach or a sex educator. Most towns at this point have sex toy stores or lingerie stores that have sex educators coming through. There's a wealth of information online. And there is a website called FetLife. That's F-E-T-L-I-F-E.com. And they have educate. It's like Facebook. And once you sign up, you'll see events in your area. There are, are discussion groups you can join. And so you can find events in your area to go to. Go to events looking for friends, not looking for fit playmates, first of all, because your friends will lead you to people who are compatible to play with. So that's what I recommend if you don't have a partner. If you're with a partner and you are the only one, and both, let's start with you both have decided that this is intriguing to you and you want to play. And I recommend playing from both sides of the whip at first just to see what it's like. And also because maybe you already know about yourself that you have a more sadistic personality. It's good to experience and learn what some of the toys feel like so that you can get some uh, a sense. I don't like to use any toy on anyone that I haven't at least slapped against my own leg or my own arm um, so that I have a sense of what it's capable of and what it does. Okay, so if you're partners, you're exploring together, if it's fun for you, explore switching places. If that's not fun for you, explore with in the roles that you decide. One's gonna be sadist, one's gonna be masochist. Discuss beforehand what you're going to do, how long the scene is going to last, and exactly what's included, what the traffic lights mean, what your safe, words, safe word is. And then do only exactly what you agreed that you were going to do. And if it's new play, constantly be checking in. This is the role, your role as the dominant to be checking in. Hit them with something. What's your color? Scrape them with something sharp and pointy. What's your color? If they're bound, what's your color? And adapt yourself accordingly. Being really mindful that sometimes when someone is in a masochist position, they can go to an altered state because of the endorphin rush, because of the, the hormone cocktail that begins to run, they can, they can drift doesn't usually happen in first-time players, but some people who are very naturally submissive will go there. It's a state of just calm and bliss, but they actually become less able to advocate for themselves, in which case you as the top need to be willing to call the scene. I call that blue. When someone goes to blue, they're in an altered state, and it's time to just stop. Uh, also, a quick word about what happens after a scene. You want to check in about aftercare with anyone you play with. Um, if someone is experienced, they will know how they get after they play. If you're playing for the first time, things to be mindful of as a couple. The submissive partner may become very young, um, so they, and they want to be cuddled. They may not want to be touched at all. They may like to be swaddled or just wrapped in a soft blanket. They will almost definitely need water and something that gives them some sugar, orange juice, um, some raisins, chocolate, 
maybe some protein. So it's good to have trail mix around and just ask them what they would like. Be willing to stay with them, hold them, hold space for them, and recognize the gift that you've, you've given to each other. You know, I, when I get to play with someone, I'm immensely grateful that they have given me the gift of their body and the permission to interact with them as my plaything. So yummy! When you find someone who wants to receive what you want to give, or who wants to give what you want to receive, it's a magical combination, and it can be inc it's incredibly intimate. For those of you who are wondering, yeah, but I like slow, tantric sex, this can be very tantric and very intimate because the amount of attention that you are paying to each other to create this scene can be really magical and really heart opening. So very deep intimacy can be created. Very deep love is created in this, in this place. Um, there's so much more I could say about this, but I've already been going on for a half an hour. So I'm probably going to end up doing a full on class about this at some point and I will keep you all in the know. But for now, uh, please be, well, please watch this. If you answer, put things in the comment section, but rather if you put things in the comment section, questions, whatever, I will answer them. Uh, after this gets rendered by Facebook, it's going to go up on my YouTube channel, Pleasure Evolution TV. You can go there too, Pleasure Evolution TV on YouTube. I've got all kinds of videos about all kinds of topics. Um, and please sign up at PleasureEvolution.com for your free copy of my ebook. The Sexual Authenticity Handbook, find your, Own Your Pleasure, Find Your Power. And that is a great five-step process for exploring all of the ways in which you like to explore pleasure. And this is just one of the ways that we're going into today. So thank you so much for being with me. If you enjoyed this video, share it with everyone you know. Like, like Pleasure Evolution on Facebook. Subscribe to the channel because the more people that we can get aligned and embodied, I just think the brighter the world is going to be, right? So that's what we're doing. We're creating global transformation through the power of pleasure. So thank you, my beloveds. Until I see you again, remember, do what gets your panties wet. I'm Rebecca Benito. Bye-bye.